On the show today, Liberty Hoops helps those in need while hosting the Paradise Jam, and we get to know the newest member of the women's basketball staff. Plus, meet a young lady who has taken a lost season as an opportunity to grow, and we go all in on Thanksgiving in this week's warm, hot, and en fuego. It all starts now. This is Game On. Welcome to Game On and a happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. We hope you had a great holiday. And if you don't mind, we plan on celebrating a little bit more on today's show. Uh, yeah, we'll get to that a little bit later. But speaking of celebrating, one racing phenom we know so well had reason to celebrate this past weekend as William Byron finished off his season with a flourish. Yeah, that's right. We call this guy a phenom and he continues to prove us right. This past week, Byron entered the final race of the Xfinity Series in the running for the championship. Byron came into this final race of the season and clean off his fourth win. That win would actually be a JR Motorsports rookie record. Byron would hold off Elliott Sadler for the final 20 laps of the Ford EcoBoost 300 to take third place. That would edge off Sadler in the final point standings. Get this, 4,034 to 4,029. Oh, so close. Byron would celebrate the championship with a good old smoke field burnout. He leaves the Xfinity Series as champion. His next challenge will be NASCAR's Monster Energy Cup Series. William will be driving the number 24 car for Hendricks Motorsports. Yeah, exciting times for him, no doubt. We'll turn into hoops now because of the damage inflicted by recent hurricanes. The Paradise Jam moved from the Virgin Islands to Lynchburg, Virginia. Virginia, with Liberty serving as the host. Over the course of the event, LU would raise over $15,000 for hurricane relief. A great effort off the court, and the Flames showed some toughness on it as well. After falling in their opening contest to Mercer, Liberty would battle blow for blow with Houston. A big and one right there from Georgie Pacheco with 11 seconds left would tie the game at 66. But then heartbreak for the Flames as an offensive rebound and a putback with three-tenths of a second left would seal their fate. Houston takes the narrow victory. Now, fortunately, Liberty would prove resilient in their final game of the tourney, facing Quinnipiac, Scotty James. What a beast he's been this season. Led the way with 21 points, eight rebounds, while Lavelle Cavill chipped in with 19. The Flames salvaged the finale of the Paradise Gym, 84-72, and are now 3-2 and two on the season. This whole tournament is good for our team. Look, we are embarking on something different. We're, we're trying to challenge ourselves in a way, play against people that are potential NCAA tournament teams and improve our program and our brand. So this tournament was, we got exactly what we wanted, except we didn't win all three. The Lady Flames wrapping up their time at the preseason WNIT tournament with a contest against Drake. Drake would catch fire in this game and go on a 16-2 run, which would span the first and second quarter. That surge would propel the Bulldogs to a 96-68 win over the Flames. In the loss, KK Barber would finish with 16 points, and Kean Green would go 7-8 of from the floor, finishing with 14 points. Liberty finishes their fifth preseason WNIT appearance with a 1-2 record. Well, sticking with Liberty Women's Hoops, if you know Coach Kerry Green at all, you know he's a relaxed and chill kind of guy away from the court. That's not the same, though, for their new assistant coach, Erin Bath. She is the complete opposite, full of energy. Fortunately, we had the chance to find out what drives her in her latest edition of Go Talks. <laughs> Coach, thanks so much for stopping by. We really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Let's start with you as a kid growing up. Ooh. We'll say, yeah, we'll go way, not, not, not way back, not way back. That's okay. Slightly back. Uh, great way to start. Uh, <laughs> basketball, was that always your sport? Were growing up, was that, I mean, like, or from early on, did you know this, this is my game? Yeah, no, my sisters and I have two older sisters and two brothers. My, my sisters and I, we ran track. Okay. So I, my mom kind of got me, kind of got us yeah. into, involved with that. And then basketball just kind of fell in place. You know, I had, I had tryouts and I'm the tallest, tallest thing in Cobb County. <laughs> so boom, let's go. So yeah, yeah so mm -hmm, so that's kind of kind of how it all happened. You have, and it doesn't take long to see a ridiculous amount of energy, I like know. enthusiasm, personality. <laughs> like, where does that come from? Where do you get that? 
Oh my goodness. Um, always had it. I don't really know, but I think if you'd ask anyone, they'd tell you Coach Bath, E B Z E Boogie, Big E. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, we got the whole that run of there. <laughs> that oh, they they would say, yeah, she's got yeah. she's got the energy. Just happens, you know. Um, I think it's good to have it with basketball. There's a time, you know, good time and place for yeah. everything, but I think the young ladies feed off of that and they know what they're gonna get from Coach Bath. So I expect them to, I want to know what I get from them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the consistency on that is just, just how I am. And you played in WNBA, NBA. you played around the world, traveled around professionally a little mm -hmm. bit. What do you feel like you gained from, from that oh, whole experience? Goodness. Because not many people get that opportunity. Right. Yeah, absolutely changed my life. Absolutely. The world is huge, a lot going on. I've been put in situations where I thought I'd never be. Yeah. Um, some so good, some really good, some not so good. Yeah. But I survived and I made yeah. it. So um, it just, it totally changed me as a mom. Um, when I went overseas, my daughter was three months old. Okay. So I did a lot of quick growing up, even with that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just changed my life. I, I, I hope young ladies want to do it. Go overseas, learn, grow, meet, learn new language, eat the food, you know, enjoy the culture. God is good. He created everything. Yeah. So it was really neat. It was really a blessing. Best country you got to play in? Greece. Let's go. Cool. Really? Yes. Really? Okay. I, I love Greece. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, but Melise on our team right now, she is from, Melise Ukar, she's yeah. from Istanbul. Okay. And I actually played there too and I loved it. Loved the city. She, her and I were just texting each other. She's in Ankaria right now. Yeah. And we're just going back and forth. I'm telling her, girl, <laughs> I love the food. Bring me back this. Yeah. So, Istanbul's right there too. In your first year with the team, what are you looking forward to most about this season, about about stepping on the floor with this team? Well, you know, it's so funny because with every team I've been with, it's always been about progression and just getting better. This team has a huge history of, of success. Yeah. Absolutely, I am honored to be a part of it. So for me, I am looking forward to winning a championship. I am looking forward to getting these girls going to where they need to be. I am looking forward to being there and listening to Coach Green. I mean, and Andy and Alexis Chara, all of them, Coach Bloodworth, absolutely. So it's just, there's so many, I really can't pinpoint yeah. one, but I do tell you, I will tell you this, that um, the, the word championships, okay, and how yeah. you win is different for me. I win championships all the time. My girls graduate. They become mothers. They become women that can get it done. And that right there, I have a great record. Absolutely. That's so that awesome. I, I am excited about winning those championships, if you know what I mean. That's awesome. Coach, it's been great to meet you. you. Great to sit down with you, you. And good luck this season. I Thank have no you doubt so much. much success is in your future. Thank you. Well, time to turn our attention to football. It would be a memorable day for the Flames after 16 years. It would be their last day of football as a member of the Big South. Flames taking on Charleston Southern at their barn. Buckshot would throw his first pick in 18 quarters. This would enable the Bucks to get quality field position. On a fourth and goal play, Schuler would bounce in and CSU would get the extra point, taking a 7-0 lead. 5.32 left in the second when Buckshot would rock at a 22-yarder to Gandy Golden in the back corner. This would be his ninth touchdown of the season. He'd actually get his 10th in this game as well. It would be Buckshot's 29th, and the game would be tied 7-7. After both teams exchanged leads, Liberty looked as if they had gone up for good. With 1-11 left on the clock, Alex Probert knocked down a season-long 49-yard field goal to put Liberty up 19-17. London Johnson would then march his troops down the field and would set up Tyler Tekic for a chance at a field goal. After Coach Gill iced Tekic, he would come back out and nail a 42-yard field goal into the win to give CSU a 20-19 victory. Defeating the Flames, Liberty ends their season with a record of 6-5. Well, the Liberty Volleyball team entered the Big South Championship as the five seed, and they were not about to go home quietly. Behind a big night from Gabby Vest, the Lady Flames would take down the four seed UNC Asheville in a clean sweep, three sets to none. Thus moving on to the Big South semifinals, where they would meet the red-hot, top-seeded High Point squad. And while LU battled hard, they would fall in straight sets. It was High Point's 19th straight victory, by the way. The loss brings an end to the season for this young Liberty squad. They end the 2017 campaign with a record of 12-9. Well, the softball team released their spring schedule, and I'm telling you right now, if you're a fan of softball, the Flames are going to be a fun team to watch this season. Liberty has a smorgasbord of quality teams on the docket. 2017 Women's College World Series competitors Baylor and UCLA are on the sched. Joining them will be Arizona State, Marshall, and South Carolina. Now, Liberty will host 24 home games at Liberty Softball Stadium, and that includes single games against ACC foes NC State, Virginia, and Virginia Tech as well. Now, if there is one weekend you should come to Lynchburg. It is March 8th through the 11th. The Flames will host Baylor, as previously mentioned, along with NISC Regional Finals Ohio and Delaware. 
Well, we mentioned to you last week that Azaria Kuro will be participating in the 10K at the NCAA Division I Cross Country Championship. Well, Kuro would record a time of 29 minutes, 46.46 seconds. That time would place him 25th, but also earn him his first All-America honors. This finish would be quite the icing on the cake to an already great junior season in which Kurwa earned his first All-Region honor, third All-Big South medals, and a pair of high finishes at Elite Invitationals. Well, coming up, a lost season served as a chance to learn for one Liberty Field hockey player. And we get festive with our latest warm, hot, and fuego. Gobble, gobble, the amount's coming back. Welcome to Liberty University. We are so glad that you are here. We hope that while on campus, you will experience God's goodness and recognize his abundant blessings and faithfulness. From our thriving academics with over 200 programs and our close-knit community to our state-of-the-art facilities and residence halls, you will see that the Lord is integrated into each part of this university. Fun and excitement also await you here as you attend football games, basketball games, concerts, campus community, convocation three times each week, and much more, while developing relationships that will last a lifetime. Each of us has a different path during our time here, but we have at least one thing in common not leaving this university the same as when we came. I love this school. I love this school. I love this school. And I hope you will too. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. So I grew up in a Christian home. I was just kind of wishy-washy doing uh, the Christian kid sort of thing uh, up through 11th grade where I had a friend uh, basically convert out of Christianity. It rocked my world a little bit. I wasn't exactly sure that people could actually do that. So it kind of put me on a little bit of a quest for truth for myself. I went to a, a Christian concert and there was a tent sponsored by Liberty. And he was like, you could sign up for this scholarship drawing that we have. As I signed up for the scholarship, I myself sent a prayer up, and a couple of songs later, they announced that I had won a $16,000 scholarship. I'd always kind of wanted to be an RA, and as I stepped into the role of prayer leader, it seemed logical to progress to another level, uh, to a spiritual life coach, and then to resident assistant. Uh, my experience at Liberty has been uh, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world. Liberty Flames basketball is ready to heat up the Vine Center. Don't miss a second of the action. Inside Kim, right, left alone, layup is good. Holmesy, cutting, hanging, ducking. Get your tickets now at libertyflames.com. Hey, welcome back to the show. Our old friend Bobby Bowley joins us now. And Bobby, as we know, injuries and sports, they go hand in hand, unfortunately. And this week, your story deals with just that. Yeah, I think it's a huge part of the game that no athlete ever wants to face. Sure. And I think it truly really holds that you really have to experience it for yourself to really understand the whole process of rehab. And I know for Liberty Field hockey player Kendra Jones, that was certainly the case. When we were younger, my brothers, they both played baseball. And my dad always said, you know, if you're up to bat and you get hit with the pitch, you know, you just, you got to run to first base. Don't rub it. Don't act like you're in pain. You just jog to first base and, you know, just get on with the games. Toughness and work ethic are two characteristics that describe a great athlete. Kendra Jones learned that at a young age, and it would be that advice that she would take with her to Liberty University. My dad, he just always says, you just have to go out there and work your hardest because, you know, they're not going to, they're not gonna criticize hard work. You need to go on the field, and if you're gonna be that spark, you just have to run after every ball and just show them what you got. Kendra took her father's advice to the fullest, and her effort began to turn heads. Her work rate, I'd say it's 
she's easily one of the hardest working people that I've ever coached. Um, and I think that gives her a competitive edge. It's an intangible. You can't outscout that. And I really think that's, you know, a big reason. And she's one of the people that's going to help take this program to another level. Kendra started every game her freshman year, but after a hard fall in spring practice, Kendra received a phone call that would change everything. Well, I was actually coming back from class and one of the trainers had texted me like, hey, your results are in. Can you, can you stop by whenever you get a chance? So I was thinking, okay, like, Maybe this MRI shows nothing. Maybe there's nothing there. But as soon as I heard those words, I just like immediately like broke down. A torn ACL, the words every athlete fears. Kendra Summer would now be spent in the grueling process of rehab. It is just like mentally like kind of draining because you're just like rehab every single day. The same thing, just trying to work your way back into playing and it just takes a lot of hard work to just get through it because without um, being pushed, it was just gonna be an even slower process. Forced to sit out this season, Kendra returned to campus and embraced her new role by finding a voice on the sidelines. Anytime you get injured, you kind of have two ways that you can go. You can be really frustrated and annoyed that you're injured, or you can lean into it. Um, and that's exactly what Kendra's done. She's been able to lean into everything, the input that she's been able to give this team, even though she's not been able to have a physical presence on the field during the game day. Um, she's really been able to be a coach out there for us, which is really, really neat. It's just like completely different when you're seeing things from a different perspective. So I definitely appreciate like what my teammates and coaches have been able to teach me through this. The lessons of toughness that have long been part of Kendra's life have helped her through this difficult season. But it's the spiritual lessons that will stay with her long after her career is over. It's hard for people to ask for God's help even when things are going good. It's hard to thank Him for the times that your life is great. So I think that was just a good reminder to me that even if my life is going absolutely perfectly, I still need to thank God for what He's given me and not just call out to Him when things are not going so great. So even when I would just move up to a new exercise, I need to thank God for even getting me that far. So I think it's just good to, to experience something new like that. And with that new perspective, Kendra has started to count down the days until her comeback is complete and she can go back to playing the game she's always loved. I have. I actually had a dream or two about it. <laughs> um, but I could always hear my mom on the sidelines, like right before the game. She's like, yeah, like Kendra, way to be back on the field. And I just can't wait to, to hear those words again and just to see my teammates on the field with me. Now, Bobby, you and I were lucky enough to be in her hometown near Philadelphia, see her go through some of that grueling rehab over the summer, and you could tell right away that she has the character and the fight to get through that and probably return better than ever. Yeah, and I think the other cool part of it was we actually got to meet her family. I yeah, know yep. talking to her a little bit more um, over these last couple of weeks is her family meant so much to her. So it was cool to meet them in person and, and see where she, where she comes from. Absolutely. Big things ahead for her, no doubt. Well, big things ahead on the show. Bobby, I'm going to ditch you for a second. Right. We're going to head this way, actually. My guy, Ryan McGibbon, hey. hanging out, waiting yeah. for this Thanksgiving edition of Warm, Hot, and Fuego. And that, of course, means what? It oh. means... Pie, pecan right? Pecan pie, yes. Rhett and I celebrate every year with the traditional pecan pie. So before we get going, Warm Hot and Fuego, remember, best athletic performances yeah. of the week here at Liberty. That's true. Well, you got to kind of dig know. in here. Yeah. It, and, uh, you know, we're going to go here level Cabell. Yeah. Go ahead. This yeah. guy, Lavelle. So we're starting with Warm. Yeah. yeah. You know, Don't he let kinda, the pie distract you. I go kinda, ahead. Last week I went with breads. This time I'm going to yeah. go with the Thanksgiving foods. And this guy, he's like the showstopper. He's like pumpkin pie. You know, everybody wants the Why pumpkin pie. Why would you go pie. pumpkin when we're eating a pecan, Well, right? because I feel like pumpkin's more <laughs> traditional. If you want a pumpkin, why didn't you ask? You could have picked up a pumpkin pie. Is this the way you hint? No, I prefer pecan pie. I just figured most people out there would pumpkin. But Nonetheless, he has not been a pumpkin this year. He's putting up 15.8 yeah. points per game, eight steals, 2.4 assists in a game as well. I'm making a mess here. Just yeah. a showstar. You gotta love the way this guy's playing because I think yeah. coming into his career at Liberty, I haven't even gotten a bite of this stuff yet. Go ahead. Coming into his career yeah. at Liberty, <laughs> Good. this guy. I don't know if many people thought yeah. he was gonna be the offensive powerhouse he's yeah. become, but he sure has. He's been great. I hope. I was hoping you were gonna talk yeah. a little longer. I took a bite as well. Bobby, by the way, come get a little bit of this if you yeah, want. We'll let Bobby partake. I guess. Cabell's been fantastic here at the beginning of mm -hmm. the year, absolutely. From warm now to hot, who are you taking and who are you comparing them to Thanksgiving food-wise? Gabby Vess, and we're going to yeah. 
compare her with mashed potatoes. Okay. It says that she's just good at everything. You can put mashed yeah. potatoes, I feel like, with anything in the world. It's great. Put them on your pizza. Who cares, right? Wow. Get it done. Oh, I've never she, done that. In the Big South Tournament, yeah. she, uh, she was all tournament team, which is huge for her. She had four yeah. kills per set, that average. But also, she, you know, she's killing it, but then she's digging it as well. 3.17 yeah. digs and um, 13 kills at a 500 pace at you against UNC yeah. Asheville in the first round in which they beat UNC Asheville yeah. and knocked them off. But just a great senior campaign by her. She really stepped up and provided some quality play from the outside hitter position. Yeah. She did a great job. So good Absolutely. for her and best of luck in the future, whatever you do. Yeah, by, by the way, we've never invited anyone else over. Yeah, yeah before, I didn't know so. if you guys were going to make the invite. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Don't eat. Take a bite. Le Real quick. Leave some for the rest of us. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. And finally, in Fuego, Red, mm -hmm. who's your choice for this Thanksgiving edition of yes. Fuego? Gandy Golden, this guy. Gandy just, Golden? Yeah, he just yeah. Plays, he's like gravy. Just put him on top of anything. Is that what you're going with? better except for pie. Yeah. Okay. He's like the gravy. He's the gravy. Just I like him all over the field. It's just that much better. 10 touchdowns on the season for this guy. 1,066 yards. He averaged 50. 15.4 yards per catch and you know he's just for a sophomore mm -hmm. this guy just won a campaign and BJ Fair had a great year the all the yeah. receivers in general oh, had a, a fantastic yeah. season yeah I can't I have to talk in this piece that's the stinky <laughs> part I don't get to eat the pie right. but no Go he's on. just absolutely great and he just even saw in that first touchdown against Charleston Southern his height just gives yeah. him such an advantage, and it's not like he's a string bean of a guy. No, no. He has got a body. Yeah. Like he is just he's a big some gravy, guy. He, yeah, he has yeah. and some mashed potatoes <laughs> yeah. as well. But he just he can knock down defenders yeah. and just catch that ball. A fantastic year by him. He's going to be doing big things in the future. That's right. Best still yet to come for yes. him. Brett, great job as always. Thanks. Good job on the pie. Thanks for the invite. Bobby, thanks for joining us. Still to come, we bring you a story of a couple Liberty women's basketball players who put others before themselves and a couple last Thanksgiving thoughts. That's when Game On returns. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us. Boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. We the champions, in order to affirm our tradition of unwavering faith, ignite a passion for wisdom, challenge perspectives, inspire creativity and pursue knowledge, do resolve to be the voice for the voiceless, bring healing to the hurting, fight for the oppressed, defend freedom, defy stereotypes, and follow God's calling wherever it may lead. I think online learning is a little bit different than in the classroom. The actual online portion gave me an opportunity to be able to be the husband and the, and the father and then get online and be the student in the evenings. Liberty Online has a partnership with Centra Help, the student uh, tuition deferment program that allows a student to enroll and pay their tuition out in payments or pay it one lump sum down the road. The degree that I have now that I obtained from Liberty in 2015 online is something that was a prerequisite for this role. So I don't believe I would have this role as it was a minimum to have a bachelor's degree for the role that I'm currently in. So it's helped a lot. We're all so busy in our today life. I think the online option provides an avenue to success and it provides an avenue to, you know, being able to have uh, the opportunity to go back to school with its flexibility and its schedule. Byron, Liberty University student and Xfinity Series driver of the number nine Chevrolet. Since William was a child, he dreamt of racing. His continued partnership with Liberty University means he's able to pursue his college degree while chasing the checkered flag. Look for William Byron and the Liberty University number nine Chevrolet on race day during the Xfinity Series this season. 
your friends, welcome back to Game On. You know, here at Liberty, we have an awful lot to be thankful for. A Christian campus, fantastic professors, and amazing facilities. One of my favorite aspects of Liberty is how our athletes recognize how blessed they are and give back. And that is exactly what Shayna Vega and Molly Reagan did this past summer on a missions trip to Kenya. Team chemistry can win or lose a game. After countless hours spent on the court, team chemistry often develops into lasting friendships. For teammates Shayna Vega and Molly Reagan, their friendship grew when an opportunity came to play World Away. A mission trip is something you have to experience like yourself in order to have like a life-changing experience. I was a little nervous to go overseas because I've never experienced what life was like on the other side of the world. I've always wanted to travel and play basketball, so that was, it was very cool that I would be able to do both of those things, but more importantly for me, I wanted to just grow in my faith and explore and learn more about myself. I was positive my mom would be like, no, like it's too dangerous, like you're not doing that. But she was so supportive of it. Far away from family and the familiar, Shane and Molly journeyed to Kenya with athletes in action. They encountered a few friendly locals who wanted to play a few games of their own. Went to the baboon, like national park. So then we just see this baboon like come out of nowhere. He just starts walking closer to us, so everybody starts running and then um, he jumps in our van. And the Kenyans were laughing because this is something that they like experience baboons all the time. But we all started running and then the baboon left. While there were many laughs, Shana and Molly could not lose sight of their true mission, sharing the love of Christ with those in need. We were able to like share our faith with them and just interact with them. Like I was playing soccer with the kids and like little games like red light, green light. We went to a slum on one of the first days um, called Kibera, which is like in the heart of Nairobi. We would bring like water and snacks for the kids and um, I just remember kids coming up to me being like, can I have some water? It was hard to know that they have to like go through that every day, just not having access to the clean water that they need or the food that they need. While their goal was to change the lives of those in need, they found this experience changed their outlook on life. Just the act of bringing a soccer ball out of a backpack had the kids like lighting up with joy and it was so heartwarming to see and it just made me realize that I should be grateful and happy over the small things too. I really came back with a different perspective on life. Thanking God I could wake up and like take a shower and some of them don't even have beds to sleep in or an extra change of clothes. For us it's like God has blessed us with a full scholarship to come to Liberty and just play basketball and stuff so I'm just super grateful. We want to go on another one next year like it was such a rewarding experience and I'm so glad I was able to go on it. Well, always great to see athletes giving back. And, you know, it wouldn't be right if we went through the Thanksgiving holiday season without mentioning at least one thing we're thankful for, guys. So uh, what's one thing, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first here. Yeah. I'm thankful, obviously, for my wife and kids. Sure. They're absolute yep. beauties. But then, too, yep. being able to work in an environment and tell Christian athlete yeah. stories and just work yeah. kind of – it's your dream job, really. Absolutely. You get to work in sports sure. in a Christian environment. It's absolutely fantastic. Bobby? I'm thankful, of course, for a Minnesota family back home. Yep. But yep. I think I'm also – very thankful for my new family, my Game On family. Oh, wow. wow, she's kissing up. Yeah, <laughs> very thankful for, yeah. for you guys and yeah. for, for being here at Liberty yeah. University. Couldn't ask for a better place to be. Absolutely. I will also thank my family because I'd look like a jerk now yeah. if I did <laughs> since they just did. I'm thankful for them. And also the coaches and athletes that we get to work with, just those individuals, inspiring and just great role models for younger yeah. people as 100%. well. Love working with them. Well, hey, we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Hit us up on social media and our website. We'll see you right back here at Game On next time.